Hello and welcome to another episode of Booth Interviews. Today I have got brand marketing expert and digital designer Daniel Borg from Cyborg. Daniel and I have been working together for the past uh, eight to ten years um, since I was a very, very amateur athlete to now being more professional athlete. So uh, he's really been instrumental in helping my brand and helping myself market myself throughout my career. Um, and today's uh, an insight into his mind as to how an athlete should really market themselves to the masses, to re like to brand themselves, to be appealing to sponsors, and to be able to build, uh, I guess, a, a community and a, a following around their brand. So, hello, Daniel. Welcome. Hey, Mick. How are you, brother? It's so good to see you, mate, in these crazy days, these crazy times. <laughs> it is. It's, it's been a really, really different time, but I guess you're working from home yeah. normally, um, so it hasn't really probably yeah. changed yeah. you too much, but it's obviously changed a lot of your clientele. Um, I guess we can start yeah. with that. How how has that affected you and your business at this time? Um, it's actually, it's, there was a bit of a small period of about three days where it went a little bit quiet, but I think that was just because of the shock of what was going on. But the three days since then, it's just been uh, pretty busy, actually, like lots of opportunities are coming in. Um, I'm having to pivot a little bit, but I'm still doing what I normally do. Um, but I've also been helping my clients through that. So those before those three days, I had done a few things to help clients already get ready for what was going on, like updating their website, sending them posters, sending them things that they could use practically. And that helped build a bit of trust through that period. And now they're all coming back and getting lots of opportunities. So it's, it's been, yeah, it's a strange time. It's really sad for a lot of people out there. So um, I really feel for them, but also wherever we can help, we will. And that's why we can still do stuff from home and, and help where we can. So. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's almost, yeah. it's, it's almost just changed the way that you, you've been doing things. Like I know we spoke just before we came on air about how yeah. we're all sort of using zoom a little bit more now. We're all sort of taking those meetings that we might have normally had in person. We're taking them online. Have you, have you found that a little bit more? You've sort of, I saw you on your website yeah. recently. You were like, I'm going to take everything online now. Yeah, definitely. Like about a fortnight ago, I put that announcement out there and I said, I'm not taking any more meetings. Um, I'm like, I was pretty much ahead of the curve, I guess, but I always already work from home. So I've been doing it for 14 years. So I'm really used to doing this. Yep. Um, so I, I kind of saw it coming just by watching the media overseas in, in China. Like once you saw it in China, you knew that we're going to be like a month or something away. So there's enough yep. time to prepare. And, um, so I've been doing that and it hasn't really changed. That. It's just the fact clients can't come and see me now, but this is even better. And look at what we can do right now. So it's, it's easier. Yeah, well, um, it's, I think yeah. I think the time and the travel and all that sort of stuff is really like calm mm. down now. And we're actually realizing that we can yeah. do a lot of stuff online and very quickly. Yeah. You did mention just yeah. then about um, China and how how it was happening over there, and I think that yeah. myself yeah. included really didn't think that we would be coming here into Australia and changing our lives to the extent it did back yeah, then. Right. But then about wow. about probably about two weeks ago, I did realize that I was a bit naive in my thinking, and uh, I went yeah. through that sort of fear and depressive sort of stage, and now I'm sort of like in acceptance and just sort of trying to get on with my life. Do you have any like sort of yeah. um, advice for like any, any other businesses or like even how you yourself has approached it? Um, how are you approaching yeah, this Yeah, well, situation? I mean, the first thing, like the reason I knew it was coming was I've been running a digital business for 14 years. So my head is right in the digital space. It has been for 14 years. So yep. I'll, I'll listen to a lot of different podcasts, listen, watch lots of different YouTube channels. Because I'm a creative and I'm at home, I can have them running in the background. So I'm always like seeing what's happening in the world, even though I'm in a, in, on the beach at Caves Beach, I've got access to the world and I've been doing that for 40 years. So you start to detect patterns of what's going on. Yeah. And, you know, for example, Bill Gates had a TED conference about four years ago and he was talking about this scenario and I, yeah. I, I watched it back then. So you sort of put your ears prick up for different patterns. Yeah. And that was probably why I saw it coming and kind of pivoted fast, I suppose. Um, yeah. But it's even though it's happening it still doesn't feel true but you've just got to be a leader like you know as a sport athlete you've got to be a lead and lead by example and and help bring others with you through it um yeah yeah, no, yeah I, I think it's hard yeah, to... following digital media was, was definitely what gave me the insight which is what most young generation are doing i'm a bit older like i'm 45 but i've been doing it since i was about 27 27 yeah. so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very good. And I guess, <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll, yeah. we'll pivot away from um, the COV D or ID 19. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we'll go, yeah, we'll go yeah, over yeah, yeah, to um, how you got, so basically you're, you're born um, 
in Lake Macquarie. Um, let me know, like, let uh, me know how your childhood was and move forward. I, you, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. No, no, I was born in Sydney, actually, at the western yep. suburbs of Sydney. So, yep. um, different. But my parents, um, they bought a holiday house up at Caves Beach, which is, you know, where where you're from as well. And yep. um, we moved up here when I was about 15, and my lifestyle changed. You know, like I was a skater kid, like an urban kind of guy, uh, which got me into graphic design. You know, I was like illustrating like skulls and death metal sort of stuff, you know, like yep. kind of skateboard graphics sort of things. And, um, and that was my love for graphic design, which is what I do now, even though it's moved more into digital marketing. But um, taking, having that as a, as a background in skateboarding really helped me sort of understand what fashions were and, um, you know, street culture and the way, um, you know, a, a street culture is kind of thinking on your feet a bit. It's not so prim and proper. It's more like street smart sort of stuff. Yep. And, it's really helped me in business as well but um it's funny because i didn't stay with i didn't start out with graphic design i went down an engineering trait for like about six years before i swapped over as well so i mean look it's a long story you can't sort of go into it but um i did engineering at university and at tafe um and then i pivoted to graphic design about six years into engineering because i just wasn't loving it but running yeah. the business has been all about engineering so I sort of run a small business like a like an engineer would run a business, but it's a creative business, so it's kind of like a left and right brain sort of activity going on. Like you're running the business, so it's the analytical side of things, like statistics and data and timesheets and all that. But then yep. there's the other side of the mind with the creativity and the strategy and the, the thinking outside the box sort of stuff. Um, yeah, and absolutely, and I like, like I. No, no, no. I yeah. think that's that's really cool because, mm. like, I think a lot of people go through these phases in their lives where they're mm. making decisions based around what they think they should do and not what they're passionate about. And I think someone like yeah. you has really inspired me because you have gone down the path that you're passionate about. Like, I did the same thing yeah. coming out of school and uni. I I went to university. I was studying engineering, and it just wasn't really yeah. for me. I didn't see a future, and I didn't see myself sitting in a, a box in a big office, like working with lots of people at that time. And yeah. Um, I ended up finishing a business degree and, and moving into the sporting space. And I was like, kind of at this mm. time, I was like, I'd rather be a really, really poor athlete earning, I don't know, $20,000 a year yep. working at a bar every night to, yep. to chase that dream than to go down a path that I know that's not going to be fulfilling in my life. Um, so that was really it's instrumental. Best. And that was, that's the best decision you've ever made, right? Because the passion follows, you know, it just creates new opportunities, new opportunities. Yep. You just start little tiny little steps and it keeps on building and, that's same as me, like uh, over 14, over 20 years ago when I made that change to graphic design, it was like a slingshot. Like I was doing engineering for so long and walking this life that I hated and it was like depressing me and everything. And then when I finally just gave it all up and then started a new thing, it was like letting go of the slingshot. Yeah. Just went flying. And But all that engineering knowledge and know-how has actually then helped me like keep flying. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and that's this the situation a lot of people are in right now. They're losing their jobs, right? This is the chance for them to follow their passions. Like, give it a red hot crack. Like, yeah, the internet's there. You can connect with anyone. You know, social media, the websites, branding, it's all there. Yeah, they could bloody make a red hot go of this. Like, this is yeah, it's really an awesome opportunity. Yeah, and that's what yeah. I'm trying to do. Even just with these interviews or with the the videos that I'm trying to push out as well. Yeah. Like, there's all these things that I've had stacked up for years and years. Like, I've got this big list in yeah. like uh, I think it's Microsoft yeah. to do. And every time I have an yeah. idea, yeah. I write it in there. And I'm like, okay, when I have time, I'm gonna do it. When I have time, I do that. And now I'm starting to put like strike throughs yeah. through them, and it's like quite cool to see. It took me a little bit of time, obviously, after the whole thing happened and trying to understand how this whole event has taken away my whole life, my career, like what yeah. I'd actually planned. Uh, but then yeah. obviously once you accept what the situation is and you try and move forward, you be positive with it and yeah. you um, try and find other opportunities, I think it, it can be a, an awesome new starting block for oh. different opportunities. Yeah, like you've already got a really awesome network of people and you've got a trusted brand, a trusted image you know, a good work ethic. So like the world's your oyster still. Like it's about, like this is the thing in this time right now, the biggest asset anyone has got is their trust. So how they've dealt with all their contacts in the past is going to come to fruition through these hard times, right? So yeah. their morals, their ethics, their values, um, what, the way they've treated people in the past, you know? And Because when the shit hits the fan and people start scrambling, 
is when people need to reach out for help. And then if you've done bad by people in the past, you're not going to get help, right? Yeah. So you're going to feel alone. So I hope, I know there's a lot of people watching this sort of thing. I just, I really pray for all, everyone out there that, you know, they've got people to help them through this, you know? Yeah. Like we've not been able to pay rent or whatever. Well, yeah, it's going back yeah, to it's the a tough, It's a really but, tough time. Yeah. I yeah, think it's, yeah, I yeah. think it's a really important time. And, and speaking about relationships and the way that we've treated people mm. in the past, like, what goes around comes around and we have to like be respectful. Yeah. And I always say that every time that I go to an event or whenever I'm out in public and I'm speaking to people, like you actually never know who you're speaking to. Like they could be your, right. your new yeah. best friend. They could be your new sponsor. They could be your new yeah. business partner. They could be anything yeah. like you never really know. So you have to treat yeah. everyone with the utmost respect. And hopefully that sort of um, yeah. comes around going forward. And um, in these tough times, as you say, that, those people can really rally around you and, and try and um, help build that community around yourself. Yeah. Like even though we are self-isolated and we're distancing and all that sort of stuff, yeah. we're so connected because of the internet. Maybe yeah. like 20 years ago, That's we ridiculous. couldn't do this. Like I feel like nothing's no. really changed for me because what I've learned no. is I'm actually no. kind of like an isolated yeah. kind of person because I am traveling so much. I am doing so many things yeah. and I have a really core I mean, group of people. I'm always around me. So the thing that, the thing that hasn't changed for you is when you're, when you're uh, paddling against <laughs> against your competition you're usually like at least three meters away from them yeah absolutely well, when we go training it's no so, different yeah yeah so so you know that's pretty awesome um yeah it's like so you're used to being isolated basically yeah, yeah now i know where you're going with this yeah well ho hopefully most of the time it stays like that but yeah but it'll be a really interesting year i think for sports people and athletes as well i think the people who um, yeah. really knuckle down, um, stay focused, like yeah. work, really work on their weaknesses, try and really focus their energies on trying to be better when we get to the other side of all of this. I think yeah. their people are going to come across strong because as an athlete, like in my position, I've, mm. I, I probably had my best year yet last year. Like I, I did a really, yeah. really well. I, yeah. I got a lot of titles and I was really, really happy with my season. Um, but amazing. now, Beautiful. but now it's like, okay, so that's what I did and that's what I was good at, but now I can't do that anymore. So yeah, um, we have yeah. to really knuckle down and really work on that mental strength and that mental game. And I think that's something that's yeah. going to bring the strong people and the leaders, as you, as you suggest, through this patch. Yeah. Exactly. Um, like the, the work ethic you have to do to become uh, world number one, the same work ethic is going to take you through any other thing in life. Do you know what I mean? Like you yeah. have to apply that and it's going to work. Like um, I did Kokoda about 10 years ago. Yep. which is one of the hardest things I've ever done. Um, and whenever I go through tough times in my business, I always reflect back to that. Well, here's my daughter here. <laughs> hey, how are you? It's the self-schooling. Yeah. What are, oh, Kids are at she's home. Telling me that she's, she's telling me she's made me a cake. I've got to go and oh, get a cake. Awesome. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not a cake. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, and you've got Lego. Come and say, come and say hello. Yeah, look, hello. <laughs> this is the new world, right? Yeah, well, this is like this is what most people are dealing with right now. Before it was like it was strange when you saw it on TV and there was a guy with his yeah, doing yeah. his weather channel and that, that with his daughters yeah. walking. Well, now it's it's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's well. I and mean, look, for me, this is this is the value, right? It's all about our kids. I've got four kids, and yeah. um, they're being home. Two of them are being homeschooled at the moment. These are two are young, too young to go to school, but they're um they're all together, and you know, um. The family's the most important. We can adapt thing, to this situation. It's yeah. Pretty cool. Like, um, you, yeah, you sort of work and you've been working yeah. at home for such a long period of time and you've had your yeah. kids around. Yeah. And, um, Adele's yeah. obviously um, still yeah. working a little bit. Or yeah, she's, yeah, sort of she's, been, yeah. she's a clinical psychologist. Mate, she's yeah. having a, it's hard for her at this moment because she's really dealing with a lot of people on the front line that are going, doing it really tough. So yeah. it's really busy for her at the moment as well. And um, yeah, so. It's just so You'll be dealing weird, with but, a lot of like people that like, yeah, like there's a lot of issues going on. Yeah. Those people are really important in this sort of situation that we're going through because right. people do need that help, do need that support. So it's really important that people yeah. do reach out to their friends and family. If, if we can sort of say like um, yeah. on this, on this telecast, like if you de do need to reach yeah. out, like just text someone and say, Hey, how are you? Or something like oh. that, just to make sure that your community's gone. That's just so valuable. Mate, it is like, just so that they know they've got a backup plan whenever there's something, when the shit hits the fan in their life, like if they need Panadol because they can't get it, they, they've already asked, they've already checked in with someone that then might be able to then have a, you know, a relationship to be able to ask for help as well, you know, to yeah. offer help so that you can maybe ask for help if you need it. So. Yeah. And then, so I guess let's go back to Kokoda. You did the Kokoda yeah, yeah, track. Yeah. Um, I think that was a huge yep. challenge for you and Adele at the time. 
yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. obviously you weren't the healthiest fella um, going back a nah, few years. Nah, yeah. um, nah, 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 so how nah. important was that challenge for you and how, how does that relate to sort of what you do now? Um, well, at the time, like I was 100 kilos, you know, pretty overweight. So we got like, went to the gym every day. We changed our diets. We got on the shakes, all that sort of stuff. We started to get a personal trainer. We took it really seriously. We trained for about six months. We had backpacks with weights on our back, walking around the suburbs. We looked like idiots, you know. Um, but then we went and did Kokoda and it was easy, to be honest. Yeah. Like it was 10 days. We actually had a really good time. And the thing that worked, the hardest thing on Kokoda was the psychological stress. It was yeah. all psychological. It was like how you fit within the group, um, how you manage your own ego compared to other people's egos, how you lose your ego and you just go back to your core self and actually just grit through it and, and make it. And I learned so much about myself by doing that. And um, as a business owner now, like I think it was 10 years ago that I did Kokoda, as things come and go, I can like reflect on that journey through Kokoda and just apply the same skills that I learned and yeah. get through it. So just like a lot of it, a lot of the issues we have in life is all about our ego, like how we perceive ourselves or our status of what who we think we are compared to other people. Yeah. And when you get rid of that and just see people for people like who they are in the moment and treat them like anyone, like you were saying before, we doesn't know you don't know who you're gonna meet, you don't know who you're gonna talk to and you know. I sort of see people that way too. Like everybody's a gatekeeper, right? They're a gatekeeper to you learning new knowledge or uh, yeah. gaining new experiences or new opportunities. It doesn't matter who they are. Yeah. Um, so you, like things like that, just stripping away all of the false identities that we have and just trying to find who you really are as a person, becoming yeah. yourself. And I think when you do that, you become quite confident and then you create your own brand and you create your own scenario, you create your own world, you create your own pathway and nothing stops you. I mean, like, I've been doing that for 14 years and it gets better every year. Like I measure all my results and everything and it just keeps on growing. And yeah. And with you, mate, yeah, winning titles is the same way. It's just different metrics, like different measurements. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've got different goals yeah. and different things we want to achieve. And yeah. I think the yeah. things that we do in our past really set us up for what we're going to do in the future. And I guess yeah. speaking of yeah. our past, like we, we go into, I guess when I sort of, or I think you approached me in, in back in maybe when I was nine, mm. 18 or 19 and you're kind of like, well, have yeah. you thought about your branding? Have you thought about like yeah. maybe creating a website, creating a place where you yeah. can connect with people and have people re yeah. reading your blogs? That's where I first started. I was, and I was making videos. I actually well, went on my, I went on my YouTube channel the other day and actually I think it was like eight or nine years ago and there's all, all these videos of me like catching waves at Cura or like doing that. I was like, yeah. I've been on my YouTube channel for like Mate, seven years. Well, I'll tell you why, why I got attracted to reach out to you because yeah. I, was, I was seeing that you were writing, you were writing, okay? And yep. you were articulate. And like, that's kind of a differentiator, all right? So if you can articulate yourself well, and then you can start winning, those two together can create your own world. So the fact that you were writing just attracted me to you. And um, that's why I reached out and said, like, you could create a blog, you know, and that led into other things. And so I helped you set up the blog and, yeah. Um, you know, the, you can see the history. You just have to get on your social media and see the whole pathway. But um, I guess that's one thing I know I've been able to do a lot is detect patterns. And that's helped yeah. me a lot is seeing where you can see opportunities, I suppose. And yeah. like I've really loved, uh, like sometimes I feel like I'm on the back of the sup with you, mate, just enjoying your journey, you know, from afar. Yeah. But, you know, being able to help you at points when you need it, it's just been fabulous. And um, yeah. Good to see. This is just another chapter of what you're going through right now, man. Like, this will help you again. Like, it's going to give you another step up when when things get back to normal or the new normal or a new order that we're going into. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think I think taking that yeah. step back is sometimes really important. Like, I, I know with my coaching these days, I always try and get people to take a step back and go, like, oh, that's what what you might have done, but we're going to try something different. Mm -hmm. And then they eventually, once yeah. they trust you, they move forward. And I think that's something that I learned from listening to you. I was like, well, you're really good in your space and I didn't know much about your business, but I was like, obviously by yeah. setting yourself up, by working at home and being able to do that successfully yeah. for now 14, 15 years, you obviously yeah. know what yeah. you're talking about when it comes to branding. So I was like, okay, well, if this guy's telling mm. me to do something, I'm going to do it. And I sort of take that approach now as well. Like I, when I'm talking to people or when I'm trying to um, establish new things, like it, I always mm. ask for feedback. I'm always like check, checking with my athletes yeah. or I'm checking, even when I'm doing these interviews now, I'm like, 
people are texting me going, Oh, that was really good. Like maybe try this, maybe try this. And it's like, okay, well, yeah. people yeah. are listening. People are watching and you're constantly trying to build on these different things that you um, get the opportunity to do. And it's just all about just doing it, not like sitting back, not just, waiting and just learning as you go. Just that open mind, right? It's yeah. A big part of being open mind. Don't close yourself off to new opportunities. Like one thing I learned, um, probably being an engineer as well is being prepared for opportunities. So getting your arsenal in check, even though there's no opportunities there, having the yeah. faith that they'll come. So really prepare yourself, like write blog articles, do all the things, even if no one's watching, just keep doing it. And then all of a sudden an opportunity will come along and you're prepared. You've got something there to show and bang, it just starts again. And then you build a connection and then another connection. So just always being preparing, you know, um, sowing your seeds, you know, it's, um, it's massive. Yeah. Like, you're laying, you're laying uh, that sort you can, of those building blocks. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can get disheartened because you don't see any progress if you're doing all this work and nothing comes. But if you're passionate yeah. about it, like if it is at your core, like inside you, like what you love, it shouldn't be that hard to do it because you get it, what you get out of it yourself is enough to yeah. spur you on. And I think that's a, that's a symbol to know that that is what you're meant to be doing. Does that make yeah. sense? Like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a big well, fact. Yeah. First, like, for example, like for racing, like that's something that I just love to do. I love to compete. I, that's something that I've yeah. really learned yeah. over this like sort of like challenging period is when I, that all gets taken yeah. away from you. You're like, but now I don't get to compete against anyone. And like, yeah, you might yeah, have like this like it. internal rivalry against your competitors and something like that. But yeah. I need those competitors to be able to yeah. get the best out of myself and try and keep but, moving forward and challenging myself. Whereas that's taken away. Then it's like, Hey, like, what do I do? How do I compete? <laughs> Like what? Yeah, like, and then like yeah, that's yeah. why I'm trying all these different things now. That's that why I have it's, in your, it's, it's in your heart. Like that's what yeah. that means. Like it's right in there. Like it's part it's of your, code. your DNA. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like um, but I, I one thing I see is like I never really think about competitors either. Like I mean, you do because it's physical, but I always see yourself as a competitor. Like for you, would it also be you want to beat the last time that you did? So you're actually competing with yourself rather than other people. Like that's what I see. I. I, I try to ignore what my competitors are doing and I just compete against what I did last time. Make yeah. it better. Make it so it's always little incremental steps. And then when you look back, it's just like, it's like a, a rise. Like it becomes exponential, I suppose. Yeah. And I um, think, I think for that, for my mindset, I think it's probably 50, mm -hmm. 50. I, I think I do draw um, motivation from like various different areas, like whether that's external mm -hmm. or that's internal or like what you're talking about, you've got like your, you're trying to beat a time, you're trying to beat a goal, but, in my mm. sport, uh, at the moment, I'm racing competitors. So I have to yeah. actually learn my competitors, learn what their strengths are, learn what their weaknesses are, yeah, right. um, learn yeah. what their abilities are, because I'm actually in, that, like, like we're all fighting yeah. for the same thing. Whereas yeah. in your space, like, it's a bit, maybe a bit different yeah. because you're, you're competing well, against can... those guys, but you're not. You're actually, like, still, yeah. you're se se seeking your own goals. You're actually yeah, able I'm... to work with your customers. Like you're right. I'm, I'm creating my own brand. So it has to be authentic to me. So yep. that's where it goes. But, but in a way where I do use what you're talking about is when I do brands for new clients, I have to look at their competitors and I have to find their points of differentiation. And yep. that's where I create a brand around that so that they stand out from their competitors. So I do look at those things, but I do it for my clients rather than for myself, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, and like, you know, I find out where they're positioned. So whether they're like a luxury item versus a, a cheap item or a value or a premium item. And you can do that through iconography and graphic design and colors, um, spacing, like positive and negative space. There's so many subliminal aspects in design that help make something look a certain way compared to something else. So yeah. if you imagine McDonald's logo and then McDonald's branding, that's very much around value. But then if you imagine a, like a five hats restaurant, that's really fancy and funky, it's very minimal. That's like yeah. a luxury. So that's what positioning is. And I don't mean to rant around, but then like people need to be aware of that when they're setting up their own brands and their own, yeah. um, their own businesses. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think for the athletes out there who are watching this, I think it, um, I guess the questions that would, they will be thinking about would like, if they did create a logo, they created a website, they, they tried to increase their community exposure. Where do they start? Well, um, I'm actually creating uh, a page at the moment. It's got like a, a back to COVID, but it's like a COVID flip, uh, COVID pivot strategy. So it's going to be a web page where it'll have like 12 different things you can do. And the first thing is creating a vision statement. And that's like very much um, like Tony Robbins sort of stuff, but it's actually yeah. just 
understanding where you want to be in say 10 years from now, five years from now, three years from now. So really getting that bigger picture view of who you want to be, where you want to be. So whether you're an athlete or a business person or anything, just having a vision and yeah. articulating that vision. So I'd say that's where the first place to start. Like, and yeah. on that path, like, what was your vision? Like, did you have like a vision statement back in the day when you first started? Like, I'm um, sure you I, did. Cause... I, I don't really know what my, what my vision statement was back in the yeah, day, but right. I'm sure you, you, I'm sure you pushed me towards it. But I think um, I've always been an athlete and now I know that like my, my vision has probably changed. Like originally it was like trying to, yeah, I'm, I'm a guy who's trying to achieve something. Like uh, I work really hard. I, I'm, I'm determined. I'm trying to um, achieve something that maybe is out of my reach, but I'm always going to keep those goals yeah. really, really high. Um, now, yeah. I guess now that I have maybe achieved a lot of the things that I set out to do, now it's more about like my brand and my vision is more about like being determined, passionate, um, yeah, someone yeah. who has Today. a lot of, um, um, I don't know, fire and wants to really achieve and have the best of everything. I think that's something yeah, that yeah, I learned yeah. um, recently. I read a book called um, Creating a Story Brand. And I think that's something that you yeah. probably um, yeah, use as well. Not, about, not, yeah. is that, but that's what it's all about. Like, I think if you are creating mm -hmm. a brand and I think athletes have to look at themselves as a brand, not just as yeah. a, a, an athlete. Like I think a lot of athletes out there think that I get good results. I deserve this. I deserve that. And it's like, well, that's not necessarily yeah. the case. You have to have more value than that. And your value is in the story that you tell. Yeah, and because everything's seen through digital media, not just now because of COVID, but it has been, right? And it will be even more. Um, you've got to stand out from the crowd. Like, you've got to be different. So yeah. a brand helps you do that because we're all just humans, right? But then if you associate yourself with a colour, a logo, a positioning statement, a website, all the touch points that all point towards that, you start to stand out from everyone else. And you actually put your values stakes in the ground. So a good brand will talk to all those values that you've talked about. So when people look at your logo, they look at what you're talking about, they'll get the values. They'll just feel it. Just yeah. like bloody Nike or McDonald's or whatever. Like it's yeah. the new competition, I suppose. Um, so if we, if we look at this logo now, yeah. for example, where is it? I'm using the wrong finger. This one here, Booth, booth yeah, Training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what does yeah, that sort of yeah. um, represent? Um, in terms of like what I'm talking about now, like, do you think that that's something that um, really resonates with the brand? Well, we only just did this last week, but I, I think it's cool to sort of yeah, yeah. see what that shows and see how like what I say to you comes into that. Yeah. No, definitely. So, I mean, the first point with that brand is it's a evolution from the other two brands that you've had. So, you know, like just Michael Booth and then MB Paddles, they've all got the same, it's got the same style as that. So it links and connects the story so that, people it's not like you're just creating something new and it's like i'm here i'm different you want to create all that legacy and build it into it so yeah. that's why we've gone with the same font and the same style but the font and that style even back then was chosen because it's got that stripe line through it which is, says fast it says speed but it's yeah. also standing up strong it's a strong sort of bold position obviously it's your name so it, it yeah. symbolizes with your personal brand um and it's simple it's like white on black or white on a color so it just stands out. It's not like, it's no nonsense. It's no bullshit. It's authentic. So, yep. I mean, they're all the values, right? I've, I'm sure they're the values that you've got. And yep. um, that's kind of the symbolism behind that. Yep. But that's not just the logo. It's the story that you tell in your blog articles. It's the story that you tell on your videos. It's the printed items, like your web, the look of your website. It's, yep. you know, the proposal kit. Like we can cut to some of that if you want to see some of that. Yeah, let's well, do that. Let's go into that now because we can yeah. actually go through the chronological order of like my first brand, like how it looked, like how I thought that it looked, and then we can sort of talk the way into now seeing this booth brand. Yeah, so is this working now? Like, can you see my screen? I cannot see your screen yet. So if you, okay. um, I think you might have to okay. enable it. All right, now it's starting to share. Yeah. All right, yeah, right. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. So um, this is just like Michael's portfolio page on, on my website. And um, this is like your older logo, like part of your personal brand where you sort of start it. And you can see how it actually is representative of your, of your new brand, like it connects. But the, the cool thing, the subliminal thing is at the moment, Michael Booth is like lowercase. And yeah. now that your booth, it's uppercase. So it's almost like you've grown up, you know, you've become yeah. a bigger person. Like, so there's some sort of hidden symbolism in there as well. Um, and we've like paired it back, but 
But like back in the day, you know, these are some things we've done. Like, yeah, I think it's built, and I think it's built as I've got as I've matured as an athlete as well. Like yeah. originally, I guess I was a, a happy-go-lucky guy who wanted to have fun, who like sort of and I, I demonstrate that in my in my yeah. sort of stories and how I put it out there, and then that's how my my brand was quite relaxed, and we'll get to that. But now. As I've got yeah, more yeah, and more yeah, yeah. mature and serious and determined and focused, I think things have really changed. And, and I think we actually, can represent that through the brand. Re- and that's also because you've had results, right? Like you actually are number one. So you just lead it and you, you're showing it. So it's leading by example, you know, and that's yeah. what you want. And and the cool thing is we've connected to the whole brand along the way. It's not like we've just changed it because when you chop and change, there's subliminal loss of trust because it's not consistent with you as a person yeah so that's really important to know consistency is so important in branding everything has to look the same because when people see what's called touch points so your website versus a business card or a um a letterhead or a, or a brochure if there's different look and feels in that you're not sure if it's the same people or not even if it's got the same logo the whole it's disconnected so you don't feel confident with it so consistency is so important, right? It's probably, yeah. it's almost like, it doesn't matter how ugly, the, the logo can be the ugliest thing in the world. It doesn't really matter how good the logo is. It's more how yeah. consistent you use it. It yeah. looks the same everywhere. Yeah. And yeah. I think when you talk about like um, leading by example and, and doing this sort of stuff, I think uh, obviously I was pushed by you guys originally, um, or by yourself, sorry, not you guys, Daniel. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was pushed by you to sort of really start branding myself and start to really start representing myself in that sort of digital space. And then I sort of had um, Shore and Partners um, Race Team and Financial Services come on board about four years ago. And they sort of really pushed me into like doing more branding as well. Like, so I think those sort of different influences, like having all the shirts, the logos on, having uh, Daniel, Daniel bought like Cyborg did this uh, little checkerboard recently to make myself look more professional. But we really need to make sure that we're leading as athletes and actually really pushing things forward. And if there's anything that I can say out there to the athletes watching this is don't be afraid to start putting yourself out there. Like people will criticize you. People will put you down because you are stepping outside the comfort. You are stepping outside the zone, but you really need, yeah, yeah, you you really need to get this stuff out there because this is what people appreciate. So don't be afraid and and don't be um, alienated by the people around you. Make sure that you just, if you have an idea and you think it is, make it a business, make it a plan and just keep moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. And like you're, you're sort of casting a net, aren't you, by doing this? You're throwing all of these touch points out there and the yeah. opportunities sort of get caught in the net and they sort of follow the net back to your brand, you as a person. Yeah. And then, you create, and then the opportunities come. So that's why, touch, why a touch point has to be consistent back to your brand so that um, the journey, the client journey, when they get to you, is trustworthy. Yeah. And I think... And I think yeah. it's really important to have that confidence in yourself to be able to seek out someone like you, Daniel, like at Cyborg to like help them do the branding because um, yeah. I find that people won't do that so often or they feel like they can't do that. But it's really important to really have the confidence to reach out. Yeah. Um, I mean, I find what I find with a lot of small businesses and a lot of startups is they don't understand the values of consistency and things like that. So they might just create a logo, but they can just think it's a logo. That's yep. not really a logo. A logo is like a hook that connects to all the other things. And you've got to have like a, a story that connects to it all together. And yep. then you've got to portray in the right style and the right metaphor, the right mood, the right tone, the right yep. color. There's so many things that fit into it so that when people see it, they just get it. You know, it just works. That's yep. why Coca-Cola and all that work because they've invested so much in their story. It's, it's ridiculous. And, um, but because of those brands, this is a really interesting thing. Because of those brands, they've set up patterns for the, how we can do it. Like we can yeah. just follow their patterns. It doesn't matter how big or small. So yeah. then other people then get it on your terms rather than, yeah. you know what I mean? Does that, yeah. Yeah, so well, you just like, you, like this, yeah. yeah. Okay, oh, sorry, sorry. Like, I was just going to say one more thing. Like I think about studying, yeah. studying successful people, successful brands, and then sort of replicating their behavior will also yeah. lead you down that path. Um, and yeah. as an athlete, I think it's really important that we do sort of try and create it for a better sport. Like I recommend like all the athletes out there sort of try and do this because it may bring you up, but it actually brings the whole sport up at the same time. Oh, so mate, like so important. This is one, one thought I had. Yeah. Like you are your own IP, right? Like you are a brand, your, your own intellectual property sport aside, like whether you're rowing, lifting, pushing all the different things you do, right? That's yeah. you, but then you've got the psychology of what you do, which is your brand, right? So um, that's intellectual property. You have to own it, not someone else. 
Yeah. So you're taking ownership and then you're competing against other brands. Basically, so it comes back to your moral, your ethic, your, yeah. your, how hard you're going to work. And that's what's going to stand out because that's the competition really. Yeah. yeah. And sorry, we'll, yeah. we'll segue back to what we're actually going to talk yeah. about. Well, well, this is the initial proposal kit I did for you. Remember? So we kind of built like a brochure around what you do that you use to approach sponsors and, this was, for memory, was pretty successful for you, was it? Like it worked or? Um... Yeah, so it, it was really successful. And I think people started taking me a little bit more seriously. And I think the way that your brand voice speaks to different um, people mm. in different companies. But um, at yeah. that stage, it was probably 2017, I think you probably did that one. And it, uh, what, what, yeah. and, we're, what, and what we were looking at at that stage, what I found as well is it's re when we're going back to talking about like who we meet, what, who we're speaking to, the people who actually really want to yep. get involved in your story are the people who are already reading your story. So these yep. sort of documents and these sort of things, like just show those people that you're more serious and they want to join in on yep. your story. They want to help you be able to do more of what you want to do. And I think yep. branding documents like this really help you um, show people that you're serious, show people that you want to move forward and you want to help them um, move forward with their brand as well. Cause you're going to help them expose to so many more people. Yeah, that's right. It's just professionalism, right? It's just um, yeah. uh, showing that you're credible, that you're going to do what you say you can do. That's what professionalism really is. Like, yeah. you can engage a lawyer because you want him to bloody win the case, you know, do what he says you can do. It's just professionalism. So, yeah. Um, and that's good. And, I, you know, there's, and that, that sort of look and feel links into the website, look and feel and your signature. And, you know, we've done a lot of other things together, which I haven't got on here, but yeah. Um, it's just that that comes back to consistency and um, getting the values across through consistency. Yeah. 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 yeah and I think that really sort cool, of brand man. voice, that brand voice needs to sort of stay out there. And I think I, it's mm. the having your involvement in my sporting career has been instrumental to sort of helping me push forward, like really draw on, I really draw on your motivation and to, to do this sort of branding stuff, because if you didn't like sort of come to me and say, Oh, let's do this, let's do this. Or you should probably be thinking yeah. about doing this. Like I wouldn't have done it because it's just, it's just not something you're thinking about because as a, especially as yeah. a younger athlete, you're mainly thinking about training, um, trying to eat yeah. right, get sleep. Um, you don't really do much during yeah. the day. Yeah. That's your focus. But then as you get older and you, and you can achieve results and you can move forward, that's when you can start branching out into different things and getting invited back to different events. Like I think because of my successes and because of my brand, mm. I got invited back to like this INX competition at the start of the year. Um, because yeah. I do have a, a yeah. reasonable exposure in ocean sports and it, it was to come back and help try and uh, reinvigorate and engage an audience that maybe doesn't normally watch that type of sport um, back. So I think all these things like you're sort of, you're not only an athlete, you're a brand, you're, you're a voice, yeah. you're, um, you're a person that people sort of seek comfort in. You've got, I've got like athletes out there who like sort of come to me yeah. and like, I'm not only working with them mentally, I'm working with them physically. And I think your brand has to represent everything that you do. That's right. Like your training programs, um, you know, different Instagram shots, all the, yeah. all the things that you, you cover. Like, um, and it becomes a job. Do you want to, do you want to take this back to full screen again? Or like get it, get off that or. Yeah, um, I can do that. Sorry. Yeah, 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 um, um, but like, um, I lost my train of thought there. But, <laughs> um, yeah. So we, well, we're just I talking think, about yeah. um, how like the brand voice and how we're speaking about, how the yeah. the, rep, the brand has to really represent what you're talking about yeah no definitely um and it has to be authentic to your values right and this this is another point like it, it's got to be true to yourself it can't be a made-up thing like you don't want to make it something that you're not and that's why yeah. i guess talking to experts helps you unpack that because mm -hmm. um you know you need to like find out what the core dimensions are rather than just what you think it should be. Does that make yeah. sense? Cause, cause people see through the bullshit, you know, when like, yeah, absolutely. You know, that's, but, gotta be authentic, yeah. And, and you think, and I think people maybe look at someone like you, um, if you're successful putting your business, like you're running, you've got, you're employing another, another couple of staff or one staff and you've been doing that for a long yeah. time and it's very successful. And then someone like me, who's getting to sort of that stage, I've, I, I think I've, I've always looked at, um, this sort of stuff is like a one year thing, a two year thing. And then it sort of becomes like a, a three year thing, a five year thing. And maybe it, it keeps going. But I think people look at it like, Oh, this, this guy just like knows what he's doing. He, he understands yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah. Like yeah. at the end of the day, I'm making things up day by day. Like it's like <laughs> yeah. that entrepreneurial nature. Yeah. Like I have absolutely no idea oh. what I'm doing. I'm just trying different all, things and yeah. then seeing how it's working. 
I'm, I'm definitely doing that too. And what you do is when you find out how it's working, then you add it to your, um, your armor. I like to think of it yeah. it's like armor. It's like a badge on your scout uniform or whatever. And then you get to use it. Like, so don't be scared to fail. Like that's, I guess that is the biggest call, right? Don't, yeah. you can't, you just got to go for it and you'll, you will fail, but then you'll learn something awesome, pin it yeah. to your badge and take it on for the next thing. And then they just keep yeah. like adding up and you get a stronger armor. And then you just can just walk through the wilderness and no one touches you. Like it's, yeah, it's amazing. Like, and I yeah, think failure is huge. And you, and you look at all those like different types of successful people, whether that's in sport or business or just general life, like yeah. they have yeah. failed a lot and they, but they're happy yeah. to fail because they have been making it up and they, and they're just trying to yeah. create new opportunities. And yeah. if they fail, they're like, okay, so how do I learn from that? And that's the same thing that I do when, yeah. when I'm racing, like, when I'm racing, I'm actually like, I'll put my foot on the start line. Like last year I, I flew from um, New York. I finished third in the, the second in the distance race and third, fourth overall and then flew to Germany like the next, the afternoon and flew there. And I think Fiona Wild was with me as well. And yeah. we both won that race. And it was just like, it was yeah. like the pressure was off because we we're just taking a massive risk because we were racing like 12 hours, like, on t like between 12 hours on two different yeah. continents. And we had no yeah, sleep right. and we just turned up and we raced. And it was just like, let's just see how we go. And I think that's the approach that everybody has to take, whether it's with their branding as an athlete oh. or in business or in life, like you just have to just give it a go. Mate, just give it a red hot go. You've only got one chance at this thing, you know, like far out. Like it's, it's amazing that we're alive. Like that's what I always come back to that. Like the yeah. fact that we're here and we can make shit happen. Like even with yeah. the circumstance we're in now, it's still awesome. Like you can make yeah. stuff happen. Like you, we're all adapted to the internet now anyway. There's that much out there. Like, yeah. And all the online courses that are out there now, there's so much out there. Like, you there's can so learn and pivot to become whoever you want to become. Like, yeah. Um, but just, I think if it's passionate, like, come bring it to your heart, yeah. then you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, don't do what your mum thinks you should do or yeah. your bloody oh, girlfriend or your wife thinks you should do what you love. And, like, all right, because you're going to die with yourself, man. And you're going to look back at your life when you're dying and you're going to go, fuck, I should have done that. <laughs> yeah. Well, mum, mum know, always hates what... <laughs> mum always hates me saying it. I always say, like, she never thought I had a job until, like, a year ago because, yeah, like, Michael, yeah, when are you going to, yeah. like, get a real job? When are you going to do this? I'm like, this is my yeah. job. This is my passion. This is what yeah. I'm doing. And I'm going to do it for as long yeah. as I can. But then something like this happens. You're like, no, oh, maybe mum was right. Maybe I should have had a real job and maybe I should have had more security. But Right. Now it's just about finding new passions and finding new opportunities yeah, yeah. and trying to create you're something else. Like I, I've created you're, something before, I can create something again, yeah. You're just transitioning now into something new, but when it, racing comes back, you'll be doing that as well. But then you're going to have another arm. You're going to yeah. have another piece of armour. This yeah. is an exact example of what I just said. Like you're going to have a, a new layer of armour that will then make you stronger when you race. Like Yeah. I mean, and I think you always see... You, right, you're giving tips to your competition right now. That's probably the problem. <laughs> no, but I think it's I think it's good to yeah. sort of get information out there. And, and I I always yeah. I also always say like it's important to build the sport. Like I think the more that yeah, I've no. given away, the more opportunities that I've been presented. So I always yeah. thought, especially like years ago, like oh, I can't tell anyone what sessions I'm doing. I can't tell anyone what like what um yeah. how I think or what I do. And it's like the more I give away, the actually the more things I learn and the more information I have yeah. and more people yeah. want to yeah. find my story and the more people want to um, mm. actually help me do more. Um, so you're just being have, open, I, just being yeah, open. And yeah. Yeah. I, find, I found that with a lot of things that I've read and I've looked at, like, the, like most successful people don't, obviously they keep some things close to their chest that maybe they've got a new opportunity yeah. or a, something they're coming yeah. forward, yeah. but the yeah. things yeah. that they've learned yeah. over time really helps they other share. people. Yeah, they share so much information. And yeah. the more you yeah. share, the more and, opportunities you get. Yeah, and when you teach, you learn. There's that saying too. Like when you're actually giving, you're actually learning yeah. more about yourself through giving and then where new opportunities could be within that. Um, Absolutely. So like it's like the yeah, openness versus closeness, you know. So. Yeah, and I think I'm a very open person. Yeah. And I've always thought, oh, it's like because other people think I should be closed, I should be closed. And it's like, no, no, I think I should just, yeah. like I, I really like helping people. That's something that, has been ingrained yeah, in me yeah, since yeah. forever. Yeah, like yeah, 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 even yeah, just going yeah. down and helping like people at the surf club or helping people um, yeah. do clinics or, or coming down training with me or whatever it might be. Like I've always really liked helping people get better at what they yeah. do and make them the best. Like I actually coach um, a few guys like Itzel Delgado, Martin Vitri. Like these guys are like top three, top six, like every competition. Yeah. They'll eventually beat me 
And they're like, for those type of guys, they need to really knuckle down this yeah. season and come out yeah, really right. strong yeah. next season. And like, I coach yeah. a lot of the elite girls. <laughs> so I coach like, yeah. So I'm coaching guys I'm racing against. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's like that's like an Arnold Schwarzenegger move or a bloody Rocky Balboa move, mate. That is like you're in the snow, buddy. And I'm not doing anything different to what they're doing. Like they're probably doing yeah, more training yeah. than I am and they're younger and they're, and they're trying yeah. to learn yeah. Um, yeah. on the fly. And, but they're, I, I really but get a lot out back, of that. You, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I get yeah. a lot out you're of like back, helping yeah. people um, improve yeah. and trying to create own opportunities for themselves. Cause I've been able to get yeah. so much out of this sport and or, all my sports that I've done. So yeah. giving back makes me want to race more. It makes me want to um, compete against these guys. It makes me like, I don't know, it makes me actually want to do it more because when you're doing yeah. it for others, not just yourself, you're actually becoming like, you're doing it for like a network of people, not just, oh, it's all about me. Yeah, you're doing it for the community. Um, yeah. There's this guy, I don't know if you heard of him, Dr. Jordan Peterson. Um, he's a clinical psychologist. Have you heard of him? Yeah. He's pretty famous. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've so read a few of his books. Yeah. 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 I love him, mate. He's my favorite, right? And um, he says... What you have to do is you have to make the world amazing for yourself. So you've got to get really good at being yourself. Yeah. Like really like honing your skills, like following your passion, being moral, moral and ethical, doing the right thing, right? And yeah. then when you get really good at that, you'll start to look after your family. So you'll, then all of a sudden you'll be able to looking after your, your parents, your kids, your wife, your in-laws, all that sort of stuff. And you actually help them become more who they want to be, right? Yeah. And then when you get really good at that, you start helping your community. And then yeah. you help them like your local, like for me, I sponsor soccer clubs. I sponsor yeah. all these different things and I'm helping them do what they want to do. And then they get better and you're creating a better world. So yeah. that's why if everyone's doing that, I mean, we're creating a heaven rather than a hell. And that's, that's just awesome. Like, yeah. Um, and I think I, yeah, I was listening yeah. to a, a, a well, I, I listen to audio books. I'm not much of a reader, but I found that I really like listening yeah, to books. Yeah. And I was listening to a book by um, Grant Cardone. It's called the 10 X rule. And he's talking about something similar. He was saying how you, you like you do this and you set your goals like higher. Like I like, say like your goal is to mm. like finish a race. No, set like set your goal to win the race or, Say your your goal is to um, say my goal at the moment maybe is to like become one of the more successful um, coaches in SUP. It's like no, no, I want to become one of yeah. the most successful coaches in the world. Like you've got to set yeah. those goals way outside of that because yeah. then when yeah, you can come right back to it, yeah. yeah. And he sort yeah. of says like, well, yeah. I instead of saying like I want to do this, you write down I am doing this, and then like you come back to it and go, yeah. well, now yeah. I am, and yeah. you strike it off. So it's quite yeah. it's quite yeah. an interesting way of looking at things. Yeah, Tony Robbins does all that sort of thing. So instead of saying I will, he says I must. Like you've got yeah. to make it a create a must, and yeah. you have to be really like emotionally in in your body. So that's why you have to love it too. Because yeah. if you don't love it and you're not passionate, you're not going to feel those emotions around it. And then you yeah. can't must. It can't be a must. So that's why yeah. the first thing is to find your core, what you love, then create a vision around it, and then there's yeah. so many other steps. And I'll, I'm going to have that on my website. Yeah. with all the different articles I've written about it. And I've got videos that talk about it as well. But um, So so what's your website for those people watching? Uh, cyborg.com.au, P-S-Y-B-O-R-G.com.au. Like, yeah. That, like that. Uh, yeah, or next to me um, over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's my, my tagline is part mind, part machine. So my whole thing's about um, using psychology and thinking and processes and just, you know, mindset, I suppose. And machine being like technology, so computers, the internet, um, digital marketing, all the thing, all the touch points. So the thinking is the part mind, the strategy, yep. and the machine is actually the media to get it out there and, and make it work. And I do both. Like um, I'm a graphic designer and a web designer, and I can build things. Like I build all of your stuff, and yep. and it's like you're talking to the one guy. You're not really talking to a team. Like I'm very agile. I've also got a junior designer working for me. I'm going to turn it so you can see Taylor here. Yeah, she's, um, she's been isolated from me. She's three meters yep. away. Hello, Taylor. I know you can't hear me, but good job. I hope he's not working you too hard. <laughs> you said I hope I'm not working you too hard. Um, is that a whip but, um, in the background? Yeah, so, background? Where is it? Yeah, well, yeah, this, this, because because of what we're going through now with the self isolation, like my kids are here. Like, so my studio looks really ragged. I've got like clothes everywhere and stuff. So. I'm going through the phase of toy. Mate, why there. do you think I have this virtual background? You should yeah. see my room. It's a <laughs> <Yeah>. mess. <laughs> yeah. I should have put that on in front of me, but uh, yeah, um, yeah, no, it's pretty cool. Um, but um, yeah, like 
I don't know, like, this is like, I really, my heart goes out to so many people out there that we're going through a really rough time now, but I hope people can see it as an opportunity to like excel and get better and find your passion, find your spirit and lift, 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 lift yourself. And then you'll lift others, you'll lift your family and then you'll lift yeah. others around you. And, we'll all get through this together, you know? Yeah, so it's about having conversations like we're having today, like about yeah, the yeah. good things that we can be doing and, and about yeah. pushing ourselves forward and not sort of getting in that trap. Like, I, I think I watched every episode of Suits for about a week and I was like, no, I've got to get out of this. I've got to start doing something. So, um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, like, and like, I don't even know where this sort of stuff can go, but I'm just going to give it a go yeah, because yeah. I am passionate about it. Like, I do love talking. Yeah, you're having fun. Originally, yeah. it was just like I sat down with uh, Dean Gardner, I think two weeks ago now, and he came over for the, okay. um, the, one of his things before everything was shut down. And just started talking yeah. to him. And I was like, I just really enjoy talking to people. So let's yeah. try and talk to people. Let's try and talk about topics that people like to hear about and like to understand. Maybe we can help people out there in the community who are looking for something to, to do yeah. and trying to pivot away from what they're doing. And I think this is a, a really great forum for it. Mate, it's brilliant, mate. I it's, it's awesome. I, I yeah. had a great time talking today and I, I hope um, someone gets... One thing that I've tried to get in my life is whenever you talk to someone or anyone or see anything, try and look for that golden nugget, you know, and like yeah. just collect that little golden nugget and put it in your pouch. i got all yeah. these bloody metaphors. I love it. And then, you no, know, you, you get all these golden nuggets, it becomes a bloody solid rock of gold, right? And um, so from this conversation, I hope someone just gets one golden nugget out yeah. of it and, and takes it forth with them and... Um, and um, grows their grows their golden gold chest, golden chest. Yeah. yeah, and it's yeah. like and it's like um something that uh, same same guy again Grant Cardone said. It's like always yeah. move and pivot to different areas. Like like people who are yeah. successful generally move away from say their friendship groups or their families, and they they pursue their passions, they pursue their goals, yeah. and that's something that we all need to do right now. Like I don't I don't mean to say step away from your family and friends, but yeah, 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 be, yeah. be okay to be and be open to meeting new people. Um, creating new yeah. friends, creating new relationships yeah. because you, you're not yeah. or you're not necessarily looking for that next opportunity through everybody you speak to, but mm. you never know that something could just click in that conversation because I have conversations yeah. with people all the time and I take ideas from those conversations and or oh, I, yeah. I ask questions yeah. from that idea well, and that, I ask questions and I make it happen. That's the golden nugget, right? You've just got that golden nugget. You put it, perhaps you write it down somewhere, you Google it, you YouTube it, whatever it is, and then all of a sudden you've got this new insight, you got a it adds to your plan, you know, and you yeah. start, you, you move forward and you, and you just get a little bit higher and, and um, building yourself, you know, so. Yeah, um, well, I'm, like, all, you know, I'm all fired up from this conversation. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I've really enjoyed it. It's, it's really great to, um, like, it's been awesome to follow your journey, mate. Like I've said it from the start. You're, to me, you're part mind, part machine, you know, like you've got the, the articulation and you've got the bloody strength to bloody keep paddling and, and win those races. It's just, it's been awesome to watch and I'm, I'm really proud of you, man. Like it's, Thanks, it's mate. Really beautiful. Like it's, and just, and just so that everyone be... knows, Daniel is my second cousin. I think, I think we actually said that at the start, but <laughs> no, yeah, no, in, no. in a sense, yeah, so like we yeah. actually been sort of family because Adele was my cousin and then we sort of um, yeah, met yeah. and then we've had a really good relationship for yeah. the past like 10 to 15 years. Yeah. So um, you've yeah, yeah, been instrumental yeah, yeah. In, my, in my career and I've really enjoyed having this yeah. conversation with you today. So thanks yeah, so much right. for coming Thank on. You. Yeah, and um, really nice. for everybody out there, I really hope that you've been able to learn something from this, like whether it's about following your dreams, whether it's about pivoting from what we've been doing, or whether it's about being an athlete and trying to really hone in on what your skills are, what your ideas are, and just making stuff happen. I think if you can learn one thing from that, one thing from this, I'm really, I'm really, really happy. Um, yeah. yeah, so stay tuned. We're going to do lots more of these conversations. And thank you so much again, Daniel, for coming on. Thanks so much, Mick. It's been an honor, mate. Cheers. Have a great week. You too, Mike.